so um, yeah, good afternoon, good morning. Um, I will I will briefly give you an introduction about Isinga, an open source monitoring tool. Um, my name is Bernd. Um, I work as CEO for Isinga for over ten years now. Um, we are mainly based in Nuremberg, Germany, and uh, also have a lot of contributors around the world, and, and of course users. And I try to give you a short interview about uh, overview about what Isinga is, what it can do, what it's capable of, and and of course I'm super happy to follow up discussions afterwards uh, if you would like to have questions into the detail. So, um, Isinga itself is is a um, oh. Another slide moved on. I think itself is a stack of um, multiple components which are responsible for different parts of our um, of our Isinga stack, which is like infrastructure monitoring, automation, all these different pieces, which I, I come to the detail later on. So we see ourselves as um, as a monitoring platform um, where you can uh, pick the pieces you need in your environment and, and put them together. Um, also with existing tools you have. So um, um, our focus from the early days was that that you can use Isinga working great together with the tools you have and not have the need to replace your metrics database or replace your, I don't know, already existing automation processes and use our tools. Um, but again, I will show you a little bit later on in this presentation um, how that works and how the tools uh, go along. So to give you a little bit of an overview about, um, about our stack and how that works, we have some basic components which work on top of each other um, to get a monitoring system. So the, the basic fundamental stuff is infrastructure monitoring, right? Where you, where you see your infrastructure, even if it's your, in your data center, even if it's in the cloud or a hybrid model or different applications, that's one thing you can have a look onto. Um, it's about the connection so you get all these different components together and um, and get an idea about your whole monitoring landscape. Um, and on top of this, if you get all these monitoring information um, and get the data about availability, performance and everything, you you get an idea of visualize them and understand the data in, in the case that you can go with the user privileges on top of it, you have your own dashboards and you get your insights and drill down your problems in reinfrastructure. Um, and of course, on top of this is the notification um, components, which, I don't know, send you a, a text message, go into your Slack or Rocket Chat, or even like call your phone and, and, and read um, the error message to get you alerted in some way. And of course, um, automate the whole process, which is which is the big part um, of Isinga that, that the monitoring um, is a part of your life cycle you have in your data center and your infrastructure and um, not going to manage your infrastructure on the left hand side and then like open up a ticket and say hey please monitor server virtual machine container whatever um, so that the monitoring is an integrated part of your whole infrastructure life cycle was always an important goal for us and that's also um, the reason why it's why it's on top of all the others um, functionality. So that's that's kind of the whole Isinga stack we have. Um, and I try to break down our six competencies we saw before and give you a little bit of an idea what it is, what what is behind these competencies like analytics and notification um, that you can see what we are capable of. So um, first thing, and, and this is where we come from, is infrastructure monitoring. Um, that you get everything you have in the data center in one application. So one thing is, um, and there, let's say three main parts. Of course, server or infra server monitoring, which is could be bare metal, but of course it could be virtual machines or whatever kind of server hardware you have. Um, still, even with the cloud, um, there are real servers out there, and often like service providers use our product to monitor the infrastructure, and that's still it's a fundamental part of your um, of your monitoring often that you have to figure out if your server monitoring is okay and uh, the basic availability is given, which is often still the fundamental monitoring aspect. And uh, on top of it, um, there's applications, um, whatever this is, um, I think as principle is um, to 
outsource the logic about the application to monitor itself in plugins. So the plugin knows how to monitor like a Chabos, a container, a Kubernetes, a load balancer, or a database. This, that logic itself is in a plugin and gives Isinga the ability to um, use that logic and also um, is very flexible to use um, external resources. So there's a large community out there where you get also for, let's say, products which are more placed in a niche, get an idea um, and, and get a plugin for them. Um, and network monitoring, um, if it comes to, to switches and routers and all that stuff for, for all the major providers, or it's like basic SNMP monitoring you can do, um, which gives kind of a holistic overview about the infrastructure itself um, on a level of network storage and per server. Um, an important part of that, and I told that before, is the automation part. Um, and what we see as automation are also kind of three parts. So one thing is uh, the configuration itself. I think I could be configured um, using um, config files, um, but we tend to tell users using Isinga Director, which is um, a web UI you can use to configure your Isinga environment. Um, we put a lot, a lot of effort in that you can import your data. So even if you have um, also a hybrid cloud environment, have your data um, at AWS or Azure, or you have like text files you have, or you have a CMDB you use in your company, that we always try to, to get as many informations you have out there in your infrastructure and combine them together to give an, I think, an overview about your infrastructure. You can do that. Um, using different merge rules. So you can also like a transformation and loading process, use different data sources and combine them together um, to tell Isinga what's going on and do that in an automatic way as well. So you can use, for instance, Puppet DB, if you use Puppet and take these resources out and put that into monitoring. So whatever resources you, you have, you can automatically merge them together and use them as a configuration resource for Isinga. And also do that every 10, five, every hour, whatever um, amount of time you, you would like to do so to be in time. And of course, um, on top of this is an API. Um, so it's a REST API, which gives you access to all the basic functionalities Isinga has, um, even like get the status out and query Isinga, um, what's going on, but also, of course, using the API to create new monitoring objects. So um, if your process needs to like add and delete and modify objects in a very volatile way all the time, you can use our API and do so, um, that your monitoring is always up to date with the, with the infrastructure. So whatever is your preferred way, and also the website and the documentation gives you way more insights how you can do and how you can merge different um, aspects and resources together um, is very, very powerful. Um, also have a look if that's important for you that you can write your own import providers to connect your whatever tool you have, if you don't would like to go and using a CSV export, for, for instance, um, you can do that very easily. Um, cloud monitoring is, is of course a topic. Um, even our things, to be honest, are on the on-premise environments because this is where we are coming from. Um, more and more um, companies and our customers are having a hybrid strategy or so at some point go full cloud. And, and move the infrastructure to the cloud. Uh, it's an important part for us to, to cover that requirements here. So one thing is that, of course, you can go into your cloud environment and, um, and get an overview about the resources you have and get them monitored. Um, an important part, which in some way belongs to the automation um, competency I showed you before, is the cloud synchronization. So in our configuration process and configuration platform, which is Isinga Director, um, you can use your AWS or your Microsoft Azure um, credentials and gather your infrastructure information out of these um, cloud providers into the Isinga Director and use it from there on to apply monitoring rules. So imagine that you, I don't know, connect to an availability zone, for instance, um, query all the infrastructure environments you have in there um, use other data you have, merge that with the sources and enhance it, and then afterwards give it to Isinga, and then Isinga knows exactly what needs to be online and available in the cloud and can monitor it 
without an, any manual process required to add resources. So you 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 are sure um, you can be sure that always you are up to date and it's synchronized uh, with your cloud environment. So in some way that leads us to the to the way you can set up your hybrid monitoring wherever your infrastructure is. Um, you can monitor it and get an overview about what's going on and the state of your infrastructure. Um, another thing is the metrics and logs part. Um, that's um, with Isinga, if we, if we check an application or service or um, a network target, we get metric information out of it. It's, it's usually a part of that availability process that we get the performance metrics with this and uh, can work with it. So um, what we do in Isinga that we provide different metric database writers where we can use our metrics we collect like every minute, second, hour, whatever time intervals you to and uh, forward the metrics um, to a graphite, to an InfluxDB, to Elastic. Um, so whatever favorite metrics database you have, um, we can send the metrics data over there and that gives you the chance to later on perhaps use Grafana um, or your favorite tool you would like to use um, to use all the metrics we collect all the time and work with them. Um, same happens with blocks. So we are very strong in that area of, of Elastic, even as Elasticsearch is used for Elastic Stack itself or for the open distro or for Greylog, which is using Elastic underneath. Um, we can go with that. But of course, also we can use an agent based log monitoring and look specific patterns on your firewall or whatever log metrics would bring on. Um, so that's a little bit up to you what way you would like to go using existing monitoring log solutions um, and, and query the data um, or put your own single graph. And um, of course, on top of that is that part with visualization. So um, it only makes sense if you get the, the basic availability monitoring information on one hand um, to get that all together, visualize it, create kind of a dashboard and, and visualize your problems and really figure out what's going on. And that part can be done in Isinga web um, with the integration of uh, Grafana, for example, or also the other tools. Um, the analytics part, which is in some way related to the metrics and logs part, um, is important that um, the web interface itself has a very flexible and there's also an, a new filter component coming up where you can um, tackle down your problems. Um, so the idea of Asinga always was to, in some way, collect all the monitoring information we can get, also um, move it forward to other tools you use for analytics, but gives you like an umbrella understanding of your infrastructure. And therefore it's important um, that you can work with all the data and analyze it. So one thing is you can um, filter them all together and root them together and, and, and combine different sources. There are add-ons like um, the business process add-on where you can, on top of your infrastructure process and business use cases, you can create some rules and say, hey, I would, I would love to create like virtual resources, which are just the result of other resources, um, which for instance, I don't know, make sure that my e-commerce shop is running. Um, and that e-commerce process itself is not like a container of machine or a cloud environment. It's just a virtual process, which consists of a lot of other infrastructure parts. Um, and I think it helps you there that you can create your own rules and get an overview about um, also complex setups and business process to tackle down what component is responsible for um, the web shop being not online um, because it's, I don't know, a database down there, a storage provider, or just, um, I don't know, a Redis database in between, which is not available. So that's that's very powerful. And with the customization on every part in the Isinga web interface, um, you have the possibility to create uh, rules and permissions and restrictions on what user or what user group can see and work with specific objects. Um, this is also available on the, on the API layer. So, these kind of permissions and restrictions are there from, from day number one that you can filter and grant access on specific data to specific user groups. I know that not everybody needs it. So in some organizations, it's like everybody has access to every service and every metrics and every logs. 
other industry work different. So if that's interesting for you, and if, if that's a requirement, and that's definitely something you should look into, um, because um, I think there's very strong in that area where you can finally create these rules, what users are able to see, um, what specific environment. So we come to the, to the last competency, that's the notification part. Um, one thing which is important that you can use other data sources um, and import them into Isenga. So for instance, if you have your contacts somewhere outside, if you have your contacts in an active directory or whatever um, directory service you're using, you can import all the contacts automatically um, on a regular basis and use them as a monitoring contact. Um, we have a rule-based alerting, so you can create notification rules, you can create uh, escalation rules if some notification works and up, does not work, and, and create your custom notifications. Um, and custom notification in that point means you can create custom notifications um, in the, the content you like to send out and of course the channels you would like to use to notify your users, your responsible service engineers and system engineers using email, using PagerDuty or whatever tool out there. So there's um, the, the integration website on isinga.com lists all the existing integrations we have for the major alerting and, and observability tools out there. Um, and they are usually um, have the code snippet there, which makes it very easy to integrate Isinga in an existing solution there. So how to get started? Um, I, I know I told a lot about the different competences we have. There's a lot more like modules and all the time, but I'm a little bit limited in time, of course, and also try to cover up with the agenda a little bit. Um, um, so visit the website. We have a get started website um, on isinga.com, which explains um, how you go forward with an installation course, what components you need. There's also a demo you can try out. Um, and go in there um, and see how Isinga web interface does look like. Um, and they get started, you can get an idea about the packages you need to, need to be installed. We get um, packages for all major Linux distributions, of course, agents um, for Windows and so on. So everything you need, also the documentation, it's open source and it's there on the website, you can use it. Um, the installation course makes it should it make it clear where you have to follow, which path you should move on. And of course, we have a very lovely community out there, which is always happy to help um, finding them on community.isinga.com. Um, when you have questions, when you have troubles, when you would like to get an idea or just would like to exchange with other users how they solve specific problems, it's a very, very good point to start. Um, yeah, to, to do a recap, um, the, the goal of Isinga is that you, um, you figure out what's going on in your infrastructure. So you get an overview about your components, your applications, your infrastructure, your business process, um, that you are flexible, that, that um, of course we want that Isinga is an important part of the infrastructure, but um, we always um, would like to make sure um, that the other components you have are work very well with Isinga. So using open standards, integrate them even from the I think a server side from the web um, module side, um, it's easy to integrate your applications into Isinga to um, to bring your data to Isinga using uh, Isinga Director as a configuration source, but also using the API. Um, that's very important for us. Um, that you as a user always are in the loop and know what's going on, and hopefully tackle your monitoring challenge. Um, and that's it. Um, thank you for for listening. And um, if we have time for questions, I think perhaps we have a couple of minutes. Um, if not, of course, contact me um, on one of these channels or using GetHash on Twitter. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, Mr. Bernard, for the interesting sharing. So yeah, we do have uh, two questions here. So the first question is, uh, beautiful icons, are they open source? Can you please repeat it? I'm sorry. So th this person is saying beautiful icons, are they open source? Um, we don't have any specific license created, I guess, but if we, I have no problem is use them. I have no problem with them. 
Okay. Yeah, another question that is, uh, how hard is it to get a hardware report using Isinger? Like the ones OpenStreetMap generates from Chef. And it is a link to the page. Where, where is the link? Can I see this? Oh, you can see in the chat notes. Tab. Oh, All right, correct. Give me a second. Um, how to hard is it to get a hardware report using a single locomotion? Uh, that's pretty easy. So like hardware monitoring and um, infrastructure monitoring is, is, is one thing we saw from day one. So one thing is, depending on, on the level you are asking for, you can go deep on hardware using, I don't know, for instance, IPMI or Redfish and really get an, an hardware monitoring infrastructure overview. Like, I don't know if your rate control is, in, is okay or your power supplies are okay, that's possible. And also on top of that, um, you can use a lot of existing plugins and also the fundamental monitoring plugin is basic. You get all the details um, about a server. And okay, what you're writing, that's a static web page. Um, you can use um, Isinga web, you can use the API to create a static web export. So what you can do with Isinga, you can group your servers, for instance, together in a dashboard, export them, or you can also using the API and get a filtered query on the required objects you have and, um, and store them um, in a way that you can access them using a website. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that answers your question correctly, um, but it's no problem.